so hi friends very good morning all of you so today we'll start our discussion with accounting standard 13 investment accounting a very 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 important standard both you know academically for your examinations and also in the context of real life because don't you think nowadays even if you have a very small client very small client say for example you have started one office as a practicing chartered accountant you have got a small client who runs a small tea stall or bakery roadside small provisional store or medical shop roadside don't you think any small client you come across will have some investments in mutual funds shares or somewhere at least bank fixed deposits or at least some investment property so everybody will have this question i you know have come across this question millions of times in my life including many of my students will ask pavan sir what is the best way to invest pavan sir which is good company to invest is it better to invest in shares or mutual funds is it better to invest in stock market or gold is it better to invest in plot or flat so don't you think all these questions we come across so even in real life when you become a practicing chartered accountant also this accounting standard 13 investment accounting plays a very big role in accounting for investments as far as our ca intermediate is concerned we have this investment accounting in two places one is accounting standards in your syllabus in chapter 3 overview of accounting standards is there there we have accounting standard 13 this is point number one point number two investment accounting is a separate chapter chapter number nine is all about investment accounting is it it so first what we have to do is we have to thoroughly read accounting standard 13 which is more about the concept so there you will understand various things about you know uh, the theory part of accounting standard 13 then when you come to chapter 9 investment accounting this is practical uh, areas of how theory will be applied so we'll do a lot of problems in investment accounting chapter we learn a lot of concepts in the theory so normally some of the lecturers they say both of them are same so straight let us start uh, the chapter let us uh, start the questions but the problem with this is you will not understand the concept why we are doing this you know what you are doing but you do not know why we are doing this for example some students ask pavan sir when we have sold some of the investments some students asked me those who have attended classes elsewhere so in some problems we calculate a uh, weighted average method the cost based on weighted average method in some cases we follow FIFO now you tell me whether FIFO can be followed the answer is simple if you are an investor for example Pavan Kumar invested in Reliance Industries Limited and Pavan bought 1000 shares if I bought 1000 shares and if I am selling 250 shares tomorrow how many shares I bought 1000 shares how many shares i'm selling 250 shares so the cost of this 250 shares must be calculated using weighted average method only the cost of 250 shares must be calculated using weighted average method only imagine i bought 100 reliance industry shares after a few days i bought another 200 after a few days i bought another 250 after a few days i bought another 500 after a few days i bought 10 after a few days i bought 25 like that i am accumulating reliance industries for so many years then finally one fine day i sold 250 shares of reliance so how will i calculate how will i calculate the cost of these 250 shares it should be the weighted average now the student will ask then when will we follow fifo if if pavan is a trader there is a difference between investor and trader Pavan is a trader that means the stocks reliance industry shares are not held as investment reliance industry shares are held as stock in trade that means my i am not see if i am a chartered accountant or if i am an employee or if i am doing something else and then i am investing money in reliance industries then it is investment for me but if i am a trader if i am a stock broker if i am an investment company my job is buy share sell share buy share shall, sell share that is my primary activity then for my books of account investment in reliance industries is there now whatever the money i invested in reliance industry reliance industry shares are there in my hand they are not my investments they are my stock in trade because i am keeping them for sale only held for sale then I will not follow accounting standard 13, I will follow accounting standard 2 because it is investment, this is stock in trade. 
So when I am using cost formula, accounting standard 13 said you need to use cost formula to determine the cost. What is cost formula? As given in accounting standard 2. In accounting standard 2, what cost formulas are allowed? Weighted average method is allowed. FIFO is also allowed. LIFO not allowed. But FIFO allowed, no. So unless you read accounting standard 13, you will not understand these kind of things. Similarly, similarly, everybody knows that current investments, short term investments are to be valued at cost or fair value or cost or market price, whichever is lower. That you know. But what if I have three shares? I have 100 shares of Infosys. I have 200 shares of Unilever. I have 500 shares of Reliance Industries. On the date of balance sheet, on the date of balance sheet, one investment increased, one investment reduced, another investment is static. How should I do it? So should I do it on a global basis? Should I do it on a script to script basis, item to item? So if short term investments are there, long term investments are there, one is in profit, one is in loss, can I set off? All these things you will learn in accounting standard 13. So what I mean to say is, don't just jump into investment accounting chapter without reading investment accounting accounting standard. You might be able to solve some questions, but doesn't mean that doesn't mean you are understanding it. So for me always concept is more important. So what we do is even if it takes one hour of time also, first let us go to accounting standard 13. Read accounting standard 13 and thoroughly understand the nomenclature, terminology, you know, definitions, all these things, classification, reclassification, valuation principles everything we'll study and then we'll go to the chapter investment accounting so shall we start are you ready put the heading accounting standard 13 investment accounting So, when you invest money, first let us see what is the definition of investment. Step 1, let us see what is the definition of investment. So, read this part. Investments are assets held by enterprise. What is this? Investment, this one. I am reading this part. Investments are the assets held by an enterprise. Assets held by an enterprise. Why are you holding that asset? Either I want to earn income or I want capital appreciation. What is that? Either I want to earn income. For example, I have invested money in State Bank of India fixed deposit. Why I have invested money in State Bank of India fixed deposit? To earn interest. I have invested in government bonds. Why? To earn interest. I have invested, you know, in a land. Land will not give me interest. Land will not give me dividend. But land will give capital appreciation. Today I purchase land when it is 1 crore. Tomorrow if it becomes 1 and half crore. That capital appreciation is there. No, that is my interest. That is the intention why I am holding this asset. Now student will ask. Oh, one sir, land purchased for capital appreciation. Is it covered by accounting standard 13? The answer is yes. People feel accounting standard 13 is only for shares and debentures. Better no. Any asset you are holding for capital appreciation. Even if it is gold. You purchased gold. You purchased silver. You purchased copper. You purchased diamonds. You purchased land. You purchased building. Building purchased with an intention to sell. Accounting standard 2. Building purchased with an intention to use in the business, accounting standard 10. Building purchased to give it on rent and earn rental income, accounting standard 13. Many people do not know this. Many people do not know this. If you are having one generator, the generator is not held for sale. The generator is not used in your business in the production. But that generator you kept for giving it on short term leases, rental. If accounting standard 19 is applicable, you will apply accounting standard 19. But sometimes what happens, you will have some assets, you will give it on, you know, rental income basis. But that might, that might be your primary business or that might be, that might not be your primary business also. For example, I will tell you one thing. For example, if there is a wedding, 
if there is a wedding say amit is getting married amit has one uh, small car say santro amit has one small car but on the day of wedding he wants to come out of a porsche or lamborghini so he is getting married in a you know destination wedding he wants to have a big car in that big car he wants to come and all will he buy that car no he will take that car on rent no on daily rental basis they'll give on daily rental basis they'll give you give some 50000 1 lakh rupees to them morning the car will come after your photo shoot is over the car will go so till the photo shoot is there you are not even supposed to touch the car also okay car will be there after car you know one two feet distance you need to stand and then you need to take photo otherwise even if small dent is there you have to pay 1 lakh so there is one person who owns this rolls royce there is a person who owns this lamborghini if any high you know uh, elite wedding is there they will call him and say anna you have that rolls royce no can you please give me for a photo shoot one day please now a person who buys this lamborghini car he is not using it he is not using it in his business he is not using it for his personal purpose he is keeping that aside only for this kind of photo shoots someone calls and say anna please send your car now you will send the car you will take 1 lakh rupees that is accounting standard 13 now you will not write you know your car in accounting standard and property planned equipment no you will write in accounting standard 13 investment property interesting no very interesting but many people do not know this they'll say no 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 pavan sir what you are talking pavan sir car is motor vehicle accounting standard 10 who said who said read the definition carefully read the definition carefully so investments are assets see maybe when you are reading accounting standard 13 when you are reading accounting standard 13 accounting standard 13 is not that clear it is not that in depth it is actually small standard when you read ifrs or indas 40 investment property indas if you read too exhaustive then you will understand oh my god in indas 40 all these things are discussed because i started my career with ifrs and then indas and then accounting standards i am doing in reverse normally what lecturers do they start teaching ca foundation then they teach ca inter first group then they teach advanced accounting then they teach fr <laughs> but in my life i started with fr then came to advanced accounting then came to accounting no so first i taught india s40 that is the reason i know what is meant by investment at global level or at higher level so even if you buy gold even if you buy you know any uh, physical tangible asset like land with an exclusive intention for capital appreciation then it falls definitely in accounting standard 13 no doubt about it if you buy gold that falls in accounting standard 13 but if you buy gold as a stock in trade to resell then it is accounting standard 2 you understand so now basically what is investment investment is any asset held by an enterprise any asset why are you holding it to earn income what can be income pavan sir i am getting dividends very good pavan sir i am getting interest very good pavan sir i am getting rental rental income very good on diesel generator side this kind of cars and all isn't it then for capital appreciation like land you understand so this is definition of investment this is definition of investment is this clear is this clear then accounting standard 13 does not deal with does not deal with pavan sir i am one asset management company have you heard this amc asset hdfc amc icici amc franklin templeton amc motila loswal amc asset management company <coughs> so these are mutual fund houses mutual fund companies so this mutual fund company what they do you know hdfc mutual fund company they invest in every company shares they buy sbi shares they buy icici shares they buy kotak shares they buy uh, you know this uh, ioc shares they buy bark petroleum shares they buy infosys shares so for asset management companies how you have to value investments is decided by there are rbi guidelines there are separate valuation rules for nbfcs and mutual funds so if you are a mutual fund house don't look at AS13 because AS13 is smaller one. You have bigger level guidance. 
So AS 13 is not applicable to asset management companies which are into this mutual funds. AS 13 is not applicable if you know you are dealing with operating leases or finance leases because then you will fall in accounting standard 19. If you are holding assets for leasing, rental income is different, leasing is different. So sometimes on a building you will see board 25,000 square feet commercial complex. Then they will write shop vacant. Then they will write rent or lease. Rent or lease. Do you know what is the difference? Rent is for a shorter term. Lease is normally for a longer term. So rental means less than 11 months you will write the agreement. You will not touch one year. So any property, house property or any you know shop, commercial establishment, if you are taking on rent, you will enter into rental agreement with the owner. No, that will be for 11 months. Even my tenant, you know, whatever the flat I have given on rent, I will write only for 11 months. As a tenant, what I have taken is also on 11 months only. But if you are running a business, you will take the building for 5 years, 10 years, that is lease. So if you are keeping an asset to give it on lease, then go to accounting standard 19. No sir, for rental income, then come to accounting standard 13. So look here, accounting standard 13 deals with accounting for investments in the financial statements and related disclosures. But AS 13 does not deal with four items. One, operating or finance leases, you have separate standard for that. Two, mutual funds, venture capital fund or any other asset management companies, banks, financial institutions. So if you are a bank, RBI guidelines are there. If you are a financial institution, there are guidelines for NBFC. If you are an asset management company, there are guidelines for valuation of investments. So for these kind of entities, AS 13 does not apply because they have detailed, more detailed guidelines. How to value investments? There are more detailed guidelines. Assets held for sale, assets held for trading, assets held, you know, for long term investments. There are so many guidelines are there. Then, then, Pavan sir, whatever the income from that investment comes interest comes dividend comes royalty comes or rental income comes shall i follow accounting standard 13 for that accounting no they are covered in accounting standard 9 accounting standard 9 you remember revenue recognition revenue is the gross inflow of cash receivables or any other asset flowing from sale of goods in the ordinary course of business rendering of services or use of enterprise resources by the third party which is income in the form of interest in the form of dividend in the form of royalty so accounting standard 19 deals with income from investment as 13 deals with investment so if you are receiving interest from your fd don't come to as 13 go to as 9 that is what they are saying recognition of interest dividend rental income for that you go to AS9, don't come to AS30. Then investments on retirement benefits, beautiful standard is there, accounting standard 15. Pavan sir, I am a pension house. Pavan sir, I have created some gratuity fund. Pavan sir, I have created some investments for the benefit of my employees. Better straight to go to accounting standard 15, don't come to accounting standard 13. So this is the scope of, you know, accounting standard 13. Now you understand what is the definition? What are the inclusions? What are the exclusions? This is part one. So you understand up to this? Before we go further, tell me, do you have any doubts after this?